Hello, YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, I've been working on a 3D project, and as you know from the thumbnail, they are micro paddles that you mount on your wrist. Why on your wrist? Well, first off, um, I've seen a lot of micro paddle designs popping up here and there. People are using them for summits on the air, parks on the air, and field work because they take a lot less space in your go, in your, uh, go bag or your go kit. Um, most of them that I've seen are really small and they're handheld. And uh, that's cool, but uh, I've noticed from when I've worked in the past out in the field, I've had paddles sitting on a table, picnic table, a little table, and you got to move them around. You got to keep track of them, slide them over to send on, move them out of the way when you're working the radio. Um, and these little tiny uh, paddles that are popular for the soda and poda guys, they're handheld. So one of your hands is occupied holding the paddles when you're sending, and then uh, you probably have to put them down to write or operate the radio, drink, take a drink of your coffee or whatever. So you have to put them down someplace, keep track of them, pick them back up. And I thought, why not do like we did with clocks uh, back years and decades and 100 or more years ago when we put watches on our wrists? Why not put the paddles on your wrists? And so that was the idea. And I spent a couple of weeks in the uh, best 3D modeling software that I have, which is all up here, mulling the design over, working out the kinks, and uh, this is the result. And it's tiny. Look at that little thing. I'll show you some close-up pictures of it here. Um, the uh, design goals on this guy were, one, minimal hardware. Um, I've done, in the past, a minimal hardware straight key and a cootie key that are both up on Thingiverse. Uh, with the goal being to use the least amount of hardware. 3D print as much of the um, material of, of the parts as, as possible. So you have the, m the absolute minimal amount of hardware required. And that's what I adhered to with this design. The paddles are um, 3D printed. They, the flex of the PLA is what's providing the spring material. And it, it actually works quite well. It's a very soft touch. Uh, it's effortless to use. Um, there are loop mounts at the front and back, so you can put a strap on, like I did here. And this is a Velcro strap material like you'd use for holding batteries down on a drone or other hobbyist applications in RC. It's a real common uh, type of Velcro strap material. So that just goes right through the paddle, and uh, you can just slip your wrist in, tighten it up, and, and have it right there on your wrist, as you can see in this photograph. So. Um, the other uh, design goal was to make it as modular as possible, where parts could easily be swapped out, replaced, or repaired, or upgraded, which I've also done. Uh, so let's take a closer look at the design, and uh, then uh, we'll talk about operation. So I designed it in Tinkercad. Uh, sure, I could use more sophisticated CAD software, but Tinkercad is just so quick and easy for me that I do most of my designs in it. I, I can knock things out really fast in Tinker. Well, anyway, um, so we have five parts to the print. The uh, main base here, which has all of our slots to receive the other parts and all the channels for the wires and the wrist straps and everything. Um, this is a top cover over here. This is the paddle arm, and you'd print two of these. Uh, and then this is the front panel piece that goes in this front slot here. And that holds the screw for the center contact and has a little guide screw, a hole for the uh, wire to go through down here. Um, and then uh, on the sides are these cutouts. And these cutouts are to allow the paddle wires to go through and uh, to make it easy to route them. Um, I'll show you why I did it this way in a moment. Uh, but uh, anyway. Uh, and this is the back panel here, which holds the 3.5mm uh, or 8th inch stereo jack 
for connecting up to a uh, 3.5 millimeter stereo uh, extension cord, which you can buy on Amazon anywhere else. Uh, so anyway, uh, you'd print all four of these parts out, and then we would uh, go to assembly. Now, the nice thing with this is, it's a, as I said, it's a minimal hardware design. So this is all you need to put it together. Um, the screws I chose to use are metric M4 screws, which seem to be the most common for hobbyist uh, projects. So I figured I'd use fairly standard and common hardware for this. For my U.S. guys, uh, sorry for using metric, but you can buy these at any hardware store. So, uh, you know, just pick up some metric hardware. It's cheap. Uh, three washers, three nuts, uh, the stereo jack, and some fine connecting wire. Now I'm using 30 gauge wire wrap wire that I have on hand. Uh, you could use any real fine stranded wire or uh, solid, it doesn't matter, but uh, 28 to 30 gauge, you'd, you'd want pretty small wire. And the reason for that is you don't want the wire interfering with the action of the paddles if it's too stiff. Like 18 gauge copper would be too stiff and it would make the paddles stiff and possibly sticky. So that's all you need uh, to put this together. And the, um, the, uh, the reason that I did it this way is so you can wire it up outside of the base. You see, it, clearances are really tight in here. And it would be really tough if this was all put together to hook up the wires. Probably almost impossible. So by making these sliding uh, panels, we can wire it up outside of the base. So you do your wiring and then you just slot everything in and it looks uh, like so. Okay, so here uh, we can see the wire guides. And the reason that I put these cutouts in is when you're putting it together, you can slide this front panel in until these cutouts are just above the lip, right? Can I zoom? Yeah. So you would slide this panel down to where this cutout is just above the slot put the wire in there, guide it in there, and then slide the panels down, or the panel down. So it makes it pretty easy to get the, uh, the wires in when you put it together. And then when the entire thing is put together, it looks like this. Here it is assembled. With the cover off, of course. But as you can see, it's nice and neat and tidy. Now, the, really the only critical part of this print is this front panel here. Okay, This has to fit this has to fit in this slot snugly. It can't wiggle around. It's, it's got to be a nice snug fit. And no, th no two 3D printers are set up exactly the same. So if you go to insert this panel and it slides right in under gravity and wiggles around slightly, you'll want to reprint this panel but slightly increase its size, maybe by one-tenth of a percent. Or if you load it into a modeler, increase its width by one, uh, point ten, point 0.1 millimeter, one-tenth of a millimeter, and then uh, make sure that it slides into this slot snugly and doesn't wiggle around. That's important so that this center contact screw clears properly and um, doesn't move around and make contact when you don't want it to. So that, that front panel is the only critical part. But that's, that's really it uh, as far as the design. It's nice and simple. Uh, this modular design also makes it very easy to replace a part. So if, if, for example, you dropped it and it fell just right and hit the paddle and broke one of these paddles, you could carry some spares with you and all you need to do to replace the panel is take the cover off, uh, take this screw out so the wire stays you know, where it should be, and then just slide the paddle up out of its slot, slide the new one in, put the screw back in, put the cover back on. You can, you can swap out parts quickly and easily with this modular design. So that's the design of it. So that's the design. It's uh, pretty quick and easy to print. You can print all the parts in about an hour and a half on most uh, 3D printers. I printed at two millimeter layer height, which uh, is fine. It gives it a nice finish and it's uh, f solid, you know, and, and robust. Um, what about use? Uh, well, you know, you could still use these as handheld paddles. I mean, they're really small. You could just, you know, hold it. Um, but uh, the design goal, the idea was to mount it on the wrist. And how well did that work out? Well, I went outside uh, in my folding chair, took the 705 with me, and just tried to imagine that I was in a park or uh, on a summit. Um, I guess if you, if you wanted to carry a folding chair on the summit, I would imagine the summits on the air guys usually end up sitting on the ground or on rocks. 
Uh, but anyway, um, I sat out there and played around with it on the 7.5 for a little while to get a feel for it on my wrist and to see if it, one, if it got in the way, two, if the cord was a problem, and uh, three, how comfortable it was to send with the paddles on my wrist. Sorry, no copy. Oh well. So this is totally comfortable. Um, it's like a wristwatch. It's out of the way. I can book the radio, hold my notepad, drink a pop. The wire is draped over to the radio, but you know you're aware of it. You don't really have to think about it too much. Um, I haven't banged in, into anything yet. It's just always there and ready to go. So there you go. My 3D printable minimal hardware wrist mounted paddles. Um, I think it works. I think it's, uh, I don't know why nobody's done this before. At least I couldn't find any instance of people doing this before. I, I can't imagine somebody hasn't tried this before or maybe used it on the wrist before. But, but uh, anyway, um, we'll see how it goes. I think that they work out pretty well. Uh, they don't take much space to store them in a go bag. Um, they seem to be fairly robust. They have a good feel to them and they seem to work really well on the wrist. So I'm looking forward to hearing some feedback, uh, if anybody builds them, uh, what they think of them. Uh, one side note, uh, in order to keep the clearances and everything accurate, I had to choose a specific screw type. Um, and I thought about that and I thought about that and I made I asked uh, uh, questions here and there about common hobbyist screw types and I settled on the M4 metric screw and the reason I did that is it seems to be the most popular screw size for a lot of hobbyist projects uh, and globally uh, well my audience is not just US viewers it's more than half uh, viewers from around the rest of the world so I figured well I'm gonna go ahead and use a metric screw for this um, for, the go for those of you in the U.S., before you get all up in arms and hit me in the comments, uh, you can buy metric screws at any hardware store, and all you really need is a, a couple of packets of screws and a, cup and a packet of nuts and washers, and it's cheap. So, um, yeah, that's why I, I decided to use that. It just it seems to be the most common screw type in hobbyist projects, and uh, I needed to use a specific screw type for the gaps, the contact gaps, to be consistent. And I've built uh, three of them so far in testing, and um, they seem to work consistently well. They come out right, they, uh, the gaps were right, the, the switching action was right, everything seems to, to work. So hopefully people won't have trouble 3D printing. There is uh, going to be an assembly video that's going to talk about assembling the key, uh, and it'll be uh, some tips and tricks, uh, or tips and hints on assembly to make sure that your paddles work the first time you try them. Uh, that'll be linked in the video description below and also uh, will be tied to the Thingiverse page where I post the files. And the Thingiverse link will also be in the description below so you can go there to uh, download the files and print your own set of micro paddles. Have fun and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.